actually not this specifically. Uh, we're making stage one of homemade blackberry wine. So you get to watch the whole process. But today you're gonna see basically from what we start with to getting it into the first bucket um, so it can ferment, right? Right. And then we'll get to try this at a later date. See you but then. But not this. But not this, that, you'll see. So basically, he knows everything about blackberry wine. Not really, but more than I do. I don't know anything. So. Yeah, it's draining off the juices, I do know that. Um, so these are our blackberries. Um, five gallons of them? Well, five gallon bags. 20 pounds is what the recipe calls for. There you go. Are you planning to put all the blackberries in the wine or do you just use the juice? I'm going to use everything, but we're gonna use our sauce master to mash all the juice out of the berries. And I'm gonna put the berries in a uh, bag and add it in. So that way that we have less solids to separate out later. That makes sense. First time I'm trying this, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Draining it more, you're ready to use it. I could drain it some more. All right, so we are back. This is the, one of the best things we've ever bought. It's awesome. How are you gonna do this? Carefully? Sure. Yes, I'll do it the slow way so I don't make a mess. This step is not required. You can just use the whole berries as they are. Especially if you froze them, that kind of breaks the skin and lets the juices out. But I did that before and it was kind of a pain to separate it whenever you start to rack it to get all the solids out. So I'm going back to uh, juicing as much as possible. It's a bit grotesque, but you know, hey. Can't make wine without smashing some berries. <laughs> While you're captive, I can ask you about this little setup that we have that you built. What, you mean everybody doesn't have this in their basement? <laughs> I don't think so. So basically our kitchen is insanely small and it's not the best setup for really anything, especially any kind of canning, preserving or whatever. So I think one day I commented, it would be nice to have something that like fit everything that we need and about two days later brandon said come downstairs and this sh had shown up in our house our kitchen's too small for two people to work in effectively and we really didn't have anything that this setup would work for so it was kind of a thought i had for a while but once it was mentioned it kind of kicked it all in high gear and what's really awesome is that piece of wood that the bucket's sitting on, actually we can raise it up to different heights depending on what we're doing. Like this is the perfect height for a five gallon bucket. If you move it to the next one, it works great for, I have a 20 quart stock pot that fits perfectly. And the top one is for bowls. So it's, it's fabulous. And 
it's a it's a big countertop that goes right into our big old sink that we have down here and it's just nice to can and preserve everything down here because we can make a mess on the floor and then just wash it off because the basement's not finished and in the summer it stays cooler down here so it's not as big of a headache and you don't die as much when you're using all sorts of stove action and things you need to dig a hole so i can stand in <laughs> it's a little tight huh i'm not even standing all the way up no he's really not we have a uh, how tall are the ceilings down here? Not tall enough. It might be seven foot where there's no duct work. Yeah, so there's duct work. Our house is on a, we got a big old beam that runs through everything. So that's like the downside. Yeah, and then this is a little higher here because this was an old Coal storage, coal bin. Coal bin. So. so when the house was heated by coal. It gives you an idea of how old our house is. So what you doing now? Well, we're kind of getting a lot of uh, berry guts. So I'm going to empty that into a nylon straining bag. That way we could put it in with the wine and then make it easy to strain back out so we don't have all the solids whenever we go to do the racking phase. I've done it both ways. I've done it with just the juice and then with the juice and the berries. really don't know what the difference is, but uh, my thoughts are there are still sugars left in this, but we might as well ferment them. Makes sense. So just keep going until we finish straining. And that's the bag you're using? Yeah, just got it at our local homebrew supply. Cool. The job I can do. <laughs> so we have to do uh, 10 pounds of sugar into two gallons of water. Correct? Correct. Correct. I did it right. You so. don't have to use sugar, but that's the home way of cheating and not having to use so many berries because the sugar is what creates the alcohol. There you go. So, um, I'm heating it because that's a lot of sugar to dissolve. Um, yep, we do have a downstairs stove. Um, when my parents moved, um, they moved out of state. They just didn't need this stove anymore. And we were like, well, we'll take it. And then Brandon put in the correct outlet for it. So now we have a stove that we can use downstairs when we can and such. You need to bring it to a boil. So that's part of the step of sanitizing the berries and juice. So you bring that up to a boil, add it in with the stuff we just made. And that's what starts the sanitizing process. There you go. So another reason I like doing this downstairs is because it makes a pretty good mess. This was actually pretty clean. I'm proud of myself, but Sauce master drips on the floor, berries drip everywhere. Anything a blackberry touches, it stains. So, <laughs> including us. Don't do it in your wife's kitchen if she doesn't like a dirty kitchen. <laughs> That's valid. <laughs> but yeah, it just, and then you tied this up? Yeah, I just took some butcher's twine, tied it up, so it's good to go in the mix. There you go. All right, so that's finally boiling, which took a long time. Show them the bag in there that had the berry in it. Mm. Just tied it off the butcher's string. Those measuring skills. All right. 
Hey, I'm in the way. I'm sorry. All right, so now what are you doing? We're going to add four Camden tablets, or however you say it. I don't know. Just to also go in the sterilization process, and it's going to create carbon dioxide to uh, push the air out. So we're not going to add yeast for 24 hours. So just take two spoons, kind of crush them up. Anything else is going in there? That's it for now until we yeast it in 24 hours. Okay. Let's stir it a little bit to mix that up. Airlock on. That was impressive. Is that yeah. supposed to happen? Yeah. Probably put too much water in it, but now right. it'll sit for 24 hours and then we'll come back and add yeast. And it has been 24 hours. So what are we doing? We are going to uh, pitch the yeast. First, since we've got it a sanitary solution, we have to sanitize everything we're going to use. get the yeast moistened, which I use dry package yeast, yeast energizer, and yeast nutrient. Okay. Well, if this yeast is anything like Baker's yeast, it can handle 100 degrees. But I don't think it is, so... Now, do you have to let it bloom? I don't know what that means. <laughs> do you have to let it sit in the water by itself for a minute? And so it gets a little like cloudy and foamy? Uh, just trying to rehydrate it so that way it doesn't flood the cells with the sugar right off the bat. But so that, that's blooming. Kind of let it bloom, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm throwing a baking term at you. you look at the bucket, you can see I've accessorized it. With painter's tape. And a... Seed starting heat mat. <laughs> heat mat. Okay. This yeast uh, does not tolerate below 60 very well. And I'd say the basement's about 55 degrees here. So... We're trying to make it happy. Happy yeast is good yeast. Top it off with a little bit of water, but you don't want to fill it much fuller than that because it will foam as the yeast does its thing. Just foam or explode? Well, it could explode. Okay. I've never had it happen, but I've heard it could happen. Okay. yeast nutrient one tisp per gallon so we're gonna put five of them in there uh half per gallon so i'm just gonna put two in there and say close enough does that look happy to your baker's standards <laughs> yes that yeast has been bloomed this has to sit for how long at least a week for primary fermentation. Um, we'll see how it does. If it's bubbling and happy after the week time frame, I'm going to let it go and ride. So I'm not married to the one week timeline. I'm just going to let it do its thing and tell me when it's happy. That makes sense. So airlock will let carbon dioxide out, but won't let air in. 
this point, oxygen is the enemy, and it will cause the wine to turn to vinegar. Which is how you get red wine vinegar. Exactly. Hey! I like that stuff. I cook it with it all the time. But we're not there. <laughs> we're not making it. We're not shooting for that. Okay. That's plan B. Okay. So, Hi guys. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching our video. I hope that you liked it. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That way you can see all the cool stuff that we do. We post all the time over on our Instagram and our TikTok account. Same name right there. So check us out there. We'll see you next time.